But I might. It's your boy here, and we are back. So we got some more Fire Emblem Heroes content today, and we're going to be taking a look at our new Grand Hero Battle, Candice, who should be releasing tomorrow, I think. Yeah, 4.15, so basically tomorrow at reset, we're going to be getting Candice. So we're going to just analyze her. We're going to talk about stats and scoring and, like, all that stuff. Is she a worthwhile merge project to go for? And just a little spoiler alert, I do actually think she has some value, but in the long haul, I do don't think she is actually worth it so let's go ahead and take a look at her stats to start things off so we have 38 hp we got 45 attack we have 36 speed we've got 25 defense and then 44 res so her overall bst is 188 and she does have one super boon which is on attack and that is very good <laughs> that's exactly where we want it would have been nice to get plus res as well but it is what it is so her speed being 36 isn't exactly high enough to make good use of proper speed skills like the actually even her own weapon that she comes with which is lucrative bow this is just a different version of the white wind bow from the wind tribe catria so this skill what it does is it's giving you null follow-up and null panic and then it's also giving you in combat attack and speed based on the active bonuses and penalties on you and the foe in combat so it's actually a really nice inheritable weapon it's just unfortunate that Candace herself, not being the speediest girl in the world, is going to make the best use of this one. So, we will take it, though, for the fodder. Then, also for fodder, she has Sorcery Blade 3 and Defense Ploy 3. Both of these are pretty good pickup skills because you can use them as prerequisites for some pretty good stuff. Like Attack and Speed Hexblade for the A slot, and then all of the variants of the ploy skills for the C slot. Those are really strong right now. So she does have some good fodder there to work with, which is nice. Now, the immediate comparison to Candace is going to be the Spring Linhart that we got earlier. Now, this guy is essentially the exact same unit as Candace, except they have some different stats placements here. So while he's got two more points of HP, he's also got one more point of attack. But they do tie on attack because Candace has a super boon on attack and he doesn't. So she does tie with him there. Then she's got five more points of speed, which is actually kind of needless. I, I would say him having less speed is better. Because even with, like, 36, that's not enough to really make use of it. <laughs> so he's just putting his stats into better places. Like HP, if you wanted to run Infantry Pulse 4, gives you a better chance to have more HP than allies to give them cooldown reduction. And then the better res is going to be better everywhere for this guy, because he can make better use of other skills. Another thing, too, is that his better res, he also has a super boon on res while she doesn't. So it's actually a three-point differential on stats for res, and that could be huge in, like, certain matchups and certain situations where you're checking for your ploy skills and things like that. So I, I would say, overall, Linhart is certainly better. The one advantage to Candice over him, though, is that she's a Grand Hero Battle Unit, so that means we got an extra copy of her for free and she will also rerun in the future where you can get another copy of her from there so she'll cost less heroic grails to get to plus 10 than he will <laughs> but if you were to build either of them then this guy would be better in the long run i would say so there is my take there and then as far as scoring is concerned for arena mode if you were to plus 10 candace she would score in the 758 bin while <laughs> Cyril, who has just dominated all of these infantry bow units that we've been getting for free-to-play scoring, he has the perf weapon, and then he's also got the trainee BST increase. So it's just insurmountable for a lot of these infantry bows to compete with him in terms of score. So as unfortunate as that may be, it's just the case. So Cyril remains the king for scoring purposes. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at some builds here for Candice, because we do have a couple, and they would all apply to Linhart as well. I, unfortunately, I didn't do a video talking about Linhart builds, but if you guys were curious, then here we go. So we're starting things off with the Carrot Bow, which is none other than Linhart's weapon. This one is essentially just a different version of a ploy skill where you're debuffing the enemies that are in three columns or three rows centered on the unit by attacking defense minus seven. And then you also inflict the discord status effect on them. And then you also get Omni Breaker too, which is pretty good. I mean, this is a really nice inheritable bow, especially for units that have a lot of res and they can play up to getting the debuffs with this really easy. It also gives you plus five res in combat or during the stat check. So you have a better chance to get it to go off. And as long as you've got more res than the enemy, you can debuff them by a ton here. 
you're inflicting discord, you're inflicting ploy, you're inflicting exposure, and then you're doing all sorts of debuffs. Would have been better if we had speed and res ploy 3 access, so it wouldn't clash with the debuffing of Carrot Bow, but we have one stat that is shared between both, which is attack. So a little unfortunate, but I mean, it's, it is what it is <laughs> until we get access to the other ploys. That's just what we got to go for. And then, of course, we've got double still water for visible stats and visible res. And then special spiral four with the iceberg and Marth ring lets us loop that over and over and nullify the enemy's DR. So gives her a little bit of potential to blow some stuff up, nuke them out of existence while just debuff supporting the team. And then death blow echo just for more deeps. But I guess you could try some other stuff. There, there are other echo skills you could go for with her, like... Attack Oath Echo if you want her to warp in, but warping is just so common right now. Just have somebody with Guidance 4 or Soaring Guidance on the team. Mercy Wing Echo is pretty nice for warping as well. It's a little bit more, like, you'll be able to warp in a lot further, but it also requires a little more setup where you need a low HP ally to do it. So, there you go for the first DPS build, or the first debuffing build. This is one is for support. This next build here would be the DPS build, which is going to clap some serious cheeks here. So, Golden Yule Bow gives us minus three cooldown if we move three spaces before attacking, which there are so many ways to move three spaces right now. You either go for charge support, plus one movement support, which a lot of units are able to do that. Any Azura Dancer gives you plus one movement, or I Green gives you plus one movement, or wh whoever else you want to go for to get the bonus movement there. Then you could also go for Warping with Guidance 4 and Soaring Guidance. As long as you warp in further than three spaces, you'll be able to get the maximum cooldown reduction of Golden Yule Bow. And that'll allow us to clap with Glaces, and it should do a lot of damage. She's got a really fat res stat, <laughs> no pun intended. So lots of damage there that we can do with Glaces. Also attack res finish and insight attack res, giving us even more attack and res based on how many spaces we move and whether or not we use a special. And then Assassin Strike, I've gone for in the B skill here. I think it's actually overtaken the other, like, DPS B skills now. So things like Tempo 4, Physical Null Follow-Up 4, even Special Spiral 4. I think Assassin Strike and Occult Strike are now better than all of those. And the reason why is because nowadays the tanks are just coming with non-pierceable DR. And they also have access to Ike's Ring now, so... It just a lot of non-pierceable DR that you can't really get rid of with Physical Null Follow-Up or Tempo 4. So having Assassin Strike do the in-combat 7 damage, and then after that you're also scaling some extra damage based on their defense or res. I think this is better now. So we're going to be going for this on more builds. Also, you can outsource damage reduction cut from units like Yukimura and Legendary Camilla. <laughs> so just... Just a little food for thought for future builds and other units as well. Just, I think Assassin Strike and Occult Strike are now the way to go. And then we got the bonus doubler seal for some more stats. So, should be a self-explanatory build here. And then the final build we've got, I had to show a Blazing Wind build. Just because AoEs are very potent. So, with Nastrond and Mart's Ring, we have minus two cooldown. And then with Pledge and Tempo 4, we can just loop Blazing Wind over and over. So that's pretty much the gist of this one here. And then, of course, we've got double still water for visible attack and res, and that's going to allow us to just scale some more damage off of our Blazing Wind. So that, that's the point of this one. Now, we also have some other skills that you could possibly give to Candice. So Deadeye as a special is an option, but I actually think Glaces and Iceberg do more damage for her in particular than Deadeye, even though you can nullify enemies DR. <laughs> like I said earlier, it's non-special DR that Deadeye nullifies, which the tanks aren't really going for that anymore. Now they're going for, like, non-pierceable DR. So Deadeye would not do as much damage on her as Iceberg and Glaces. Then for the A slot, you could go for Hexblade to get some adaptive damage, which w would come in handy in some matchups, but not all of them. Bonus Doubler 4 is a way to get some extra stats as well. If you want to, like, just be an all-rounder and have everything, then I guess that would be your go-to. Fire Flood Boost, if you were to run Infantry Pulse 4, then Fire Flood Boost would come into play, because it's giving you the plus 5 HP and giving you a better chance to support the allies. 
Then for the B slot, <laughs> believe it or not, you could try Lagoo's friend. It's actually pretty good on her because it scales off of her res, which is higher than defense. And then it also gives her the minus two cooldown and then it nullifies DR. Like, Lagoo's friend is the most OP shit in the world right now for infantry types because uh, damn near every unit that can use it is going to be insane with it. <laughs> but I've opted in this case for Special Spiral 4 on her because... The only reason why is because the cooldown reduction on Lagoo's friend 4 comes after the enemies attack you, as opposed to before your first attack. So, I, I think Special Spiral 4 is a little bit better for just attacking, <laughs> whereas if you wanted to all around, Lagoo's friend would be better. Then we got Lull Attack and Defense 4 for some better stat swings in combat. Nullify their bonuses and then lower their attack and defense. Physical Null Follow-Up, which has kind of fallen off a little now with... Like I said, non-pierceable DR being better, and then also no follow-up is pretty easy to outsource now. There's a lot of ways to do it. And then for the C skill, you go attack and res 4 if you want to be able to warp in, get some extra attack and res, but warping support and movement support is way too common that I think those are probably better. Infantry null follow-up, another support option. Give her null follow-up and warping, and then give ally infantry types the same thing without the warping. And then finally, Time Pulse 4 and Pulse Up Blades if you want to get some different ways to get cooldown reduction. So there you guys go with all of the possible things you could do with Candice. I think she does have value. I don't think she's like a terrible unit. The high attack and res is very nice. Like you can do debuff support. You can do damage if you want to go for that. So she's got options. It's just unfortunate that she doesn't really score the best. And she also is just a, a slightly worse version than Linhart. So that is my take. Let me know your comments down below and also if you're going to be building Candice yourself. And this is your boy Tatro signing out. So take care. I'll catch you all again on the flip side.